Hi, I'm Ian Brody. I sing in the Lightning Seeds, and you're watching Total Entertainment. Like I said, I really appreciate you talking to us. Um, it's quite a bit to talk about with the album coming out. First of all, okay. the, I've been listening to the album. The album's fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, it's been 13 years, though, since there was a, a Lightning Seeds album. I mean, obvious question first. What, why the lengthy period and, and why now? Yeah, was it 30? I thought it was more, actually. I mean, I, I, I think the last album that I did as Lightning Seeds, I, well, I, I stopped around 2000. Yeah. And I, I kind of went and started working with a couple of unsigned bands in Liverpool that developed into a bit of a thing. And, um, and then I did my solo album. And then I was going to, I had some songs that were going to be a, a sort of another solo album, I think, or I, I've never really had a master plan. I always just bumbled about doing whatever I do. Yeah. And um, I did the album, the last album, Four Winds. And I kind of got browbeaten to make it a Lightning Seeds yeah, album. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't really a Lightning And it sort of ended up not a solo album and not really a Lightning Seeds album. And I, and I think it has its moments. I'm, I'm not, yeah. it's not, but uh, I just couldn't, I didn't really promote it much or yeah. I don't play any of it live. Just felt like it was a bit of a strange thing. I don't sort of count it. So I feel like the last Lightning Seeds album that I really did in earnest was probably Tilt 1990, really. Yeah. Uh, 19, sorry, 1999, 2000. Uh, not that that matters, but I haven't really felt like I had songs that sound. I, I, Obviously, I went through a few personal change, you know, like probably just after being so busy and being on any everything, there was a bit of a lull. And then I was doing the production and then I had a few family bereavements. Yeah. And I felt like I wasn't really writing and whatever the lightning seeds is, I think even though it's me, it has to have a certain positivism and yeah. it, and okay. That's what I wanted to be. I always wanted to be very positive, even though the lyrics are often sad and they're not like banal, happy songs or anything. They should just have a certain quality that I think is the lightning seeds. Yeah. And I felt like I wasn't really writing those. And then I kind of um, became, you know, I probably lost interest a little bit, really. Okay. And maybe things, you know, were around. And I was started playing gigs. And to start off with, I don't think I'd... It wasn't great, but I wanted to play again. Yeah. And then gradually, I think I wanted the band to be great again. And then Riley started playing in it, and Jim and Martin, and over we I sort of became a bit more of a troubadour, not really wanting to make a record, just enjoying going, playing gigs in the summer, wherever it might be, doing festivals. Not that many tours actually. I probably did two tours, what maybe one tour over that time. Yeah. But, um, you know, just was enjoying, I didn't really know whether I wanted to or whether I was going to be capable of doing another record, but it wasn't really on my mind. And then as it, as I think we got better as a band, and I feel like we're really good again now, we're a really good band playing live. And, I, and then I started writing a bit and I felt like, yeah, these are, these songs do sound like Lightning Seed songs, you know. And then a friend of mine convinced me to, to record and actually finish one. Yeah. And I think once you record a song and you finish it and you like it, then you start feeling like, well, you know, I think people might, you know, be yeah, yeah. so, you know, I think I, I better do another one. And then yeah. it turns into an album. an album. Yeah. So, you know, it kind of gathered steam as it went. And I'm really glad I did it. I'm very proud of this record. I feel like yeah. it's the right record for me right now. You know, okay. hopefully was- the world we'll get it but you know yeah, like i said i've re- really enjoyed it there's some great songs on it i'm looking, looking forward to seeing you play them live um just touching on what you said like you said about losing interest and not really wanting to do it I, did, did kind of like you said you, on this record you started you start to take momentum did, did that catch you by surprise or did you kind of think well you know there's there's, there's something in this Sorry, I'm not quite understanding. You mean in the recording of it? Or? Yeah, or just the whole process. I mean, I, for example, obviously COVID was quite challenging for everybody. You didn't promote the last record at all, like you said. Yeah. How, how easy was it to get into writing again or writing mode? 
I always feel like I'm writing, but I just don't get any writing done. Do you know what I mean? It's like I never feel like I'm not a writer. I feel like, no, I am writing. I'm just not writing at the minute, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and that's, you know, which is probably an illusion. But um, so, you know, I think, you know, the first song that I finished was a song called Great to Be Alive. It's one of my favourites on the album, that. Okay, thank you. And I, and I don't, I don't really remember writing it. I know I had it kicking around for ages, bits of it. And then when I put it all together, and in a way, that was a way of, um, you know, it's like as you get older, you have to dress differently. And I think as a musician and as a writer, you have to write what's right for you. You don't necessarily want to be writing about exactly the same things you were writing about and, and stuff. And I felt like that was, it's a funny song, that, because it's, it was what you're saying, but maybe not just the pandemic, but just, you know, people, you know, people you love may, 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 pass on or whatever you know and life you know as you get a bit older life is going on around you nothing's forever you know yeah I think uh, sometimes I found myself so I think the song is kind of about you know it's kind of about every day you're a slightly worse version of who you were yesterday you know and that's just how it is you know what yeah. I mean it's like just not quite as good as, and 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 I I think I was just you know, thinking about, and I think the verse, you know, it's kind of like hard to believe in stuff, you change as a person, and then you think to yourself, what a load of bollocks, you know, like, you're so lucky to be alive, yeah, you know, yeah, it's absolutely. such a first world problem to have, Yeah. and I think it's me talking to myself saying, well, you know, I can't believe, and you know, like, my, my arms don't feel as strong, or whatever, and then it's like, it's great to be alive, get over it, it's fucking great to be alive yeah, you know what I mean absolutely. you know and I found that that was a bit of a it's a funny thing to write about in a way but in a way that sort of made me feel like yeah you should write about how you feel now yeah. and what's going on now which now, on, I did. on that note I mean in the past you've talked about writing about death divorce bereavement mental struggles I mean, the, the pandemic alone was quite difficult mentally for a lot of people. What about yourself? Because obviously the band, obviously there was no touring or anything, no gigging. Well, what was it like? I mean, it was you? difficult, yeah. No, it was it was different and difficult. And uh, I miss some areas of it now. I think it's like I got a bit used to it and there was some things about just everything being very quiet that was kind of okay. Yeah. Um. And, you know, I think it, I think probably what everybody did was suddenly is stripped of all the things that you know, might worry about that don't really matter. Yeah. And I think everyone was faced with this idea of, well, hang on, am I, am I doing what I want to be doing? Yeah. You know, you know, all that's gone. I'm here. It, you know, is this it? Is it what, you know, you're doing it right. Make sure you're doing it right. You know, yeah. there might be a time limit. You know, I think everyone, kind of felt like that and I think everyone is in their own way slightly different post-pandemic and the world is different the yeah. world is in subtle ways quite different you know yeah. uh, and I don't know if it's a negative or a positive in a way you know it's it's hard to figure out I think it can be I a bit of both really that, or lost yeah sorry I think it can be a bit of both really yeah and it, and it's you know I'm glad to have had that thought yeah and I to have paused. You know. did, that, did that inspire the material on the record at all? Some of it. I mean, some of it. Uh, I think definitely Sunshine is definitely about that whole thing when the pandemic started and you turn your tally on and Donald Trump's in charge, <laughs> yeah. and, you know, or something else, or Boris, I don't know. Just the whole thing was like too much for me. And I found yeah. myself waking <laughs> up in the night thinking, oh, my God, you know. Yep. And then... I'd kind of go up to the roof here and I'd, uh, you know, have a cup of tea. And then it just did feel like every day is another chance. Every day is a new yeah. day and the sun comes up. And it's different for everyone, but for me, when the sun's shining and morning happened, that anxiety would leave me and I'd feel like it's all right, really. You know, yeah. it's a bit of a lifesaver. And it kind of put me into that train of thought about, 
you know, every day is a new day. Every day is a new chance. Every day starts again, reset, yeah. you know, and um, that's a good thing, I think. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Totally agree with you on that. Uh, you mentioned earlier Riley being in the band. Um, how much of a push was he to get you working on something new? And is he a kind of driving force to keep you keep you going? I think it has a lot to do with it. You know, I think I think a lot of it is he's added. He made me want to be excellent again. I think really because yeah. I want him to experience some of the things that I've experienced, and yeah. you know the joy of you know a great drummer playing your songs and playing to a lot of people and then making a record and you know so in a way I think when when you when you have a kid which is a long time ago for me you know there's a moment when you play them your records and you kind of like you, you want them to hear the records you loved and that's a lovely moment you can play in the smiths or you can play you know and it's I think it was a similar feeling for me with the band with Riley Okay, I mean, what's it like when you when you're on stage and you look over and he's and he's next to you? That must be quite a proud moment as a father. Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great thing to be to be playing on stage and to be doing stuff together and sharing that experience. You know, I always think football for most people is the thing that dads and sons sort of share. You know, because you, when you're 14 or you're 54, you've got your opinion about the football. And yeah. no one's any more right than the other one. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And you've all got your view and you can all express it. And it's something you can genuinely just both. Yeah, absolutely. Equal, you know, Which, and I think rugby league for me. There you go. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, a sport, I shouldn't say football, actually, I should say. Well, yeah, sport. same, absolutely yeah. same principle. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, it's a bit like that for me with Riley with the music. I think. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, Another song on the album, which kind of ties in with what you said, said Emily Smiles by, by Human Connectivity. Um, was that inspired by the kind of lack of connectivity people had during the pandemic and essentially conversations like this taking place over a screen rather than in the pub? Or... I think that was inspired by Jen all my life of experiencing that, that you kind of next to someone, but unable to bridge that gap or right, okay. sometimes you might see someone you'd like to talk to but you can't and just um some people are really good at bridging that gap a lot of and just the way everyone is in their own world you know and everyone's got their own world and they're all kind of surfing around each other so it was kind of like that thought and, and it was the thought that the only thing that really is the sword that cuts through that is a smile yeah. You know, that's a smile gets rid of all that. You know, what Absolutely, I mean, just, yeah. the world changes with a smile, which yeah. is mad. You know, it's such a simple thought that, but it's really true. You know, yeah. and uh, so yeah, I mean, it, you could apply it to the pandemic, but I think it was a wider thought than that. Okay, okay. I mean, you've just reading the kind of paperwork that came in the album, the stuff that came in the album. You talked to, uh, was talk about your mother and. How she described you as a dreamer. Um, I just wanted to know, going back, what what were your kind of ambitions as a child? What did you want to do? What were your dreams and hopes? I was obsessed with music, you know. And I, I've often said that, you know, like the people who were around me when I was 14, 15, mates at school or mates, at, so many of them were better at the guitar, better singers, looked better generally just loads better but i just obviously wanted it wanted it yeah obsessed by it and i think there is that sort of thing of you know probably anyone could do anything yeah. but certain people just become obsessed and practice and practice and do it and do it and they that's what they do yeah. whether it's david beckham trying to kick a ball into a thing there's a book called um I think it's called tipping points or outliers or something and it's all about that it's all about the idea that you know is someone born with a god-given talent or they just want to do something so much that they devote the time to it and i feel like that's probably me you know what i mean i just it's all i ever wanted to do it's all i thought about and i didn't even realize that it wasn't like oh well, i think all i think about is music it was just that's all i think about yeah and it you been know, odd to me not to be like that you know it was just that's what I do. I so, to, uh, 
Uh, mm. I spoke to somebody else, somebody the other day, another musician, um, a young lad, and he said he, he got kicked out of college. He was an accountant. He was training to be an accountant, and he he said he, he got home and he, he didn't care. He just wanted to write songs, and that's all he wanted to do. And I, I guess mm. it's a similar kind of a similar kind of. Yeah, I think it's just drive, yeah. But, yeah, you just um, it's that's what I loved and still love really. And I love listening to music, I love making music. I love, you know, there's a lot of different, uh, you know, but it's, it plays, a, I think it plays a, a bigger part in everyone's life than they ever realized, to be honest. I think music's massively emotionally for everyone. It's, it's a escape valve, it's, a, it's, it's so many things. Yeah. And we're trying to take it for granted yeah. and make it, you know, make it seem not that important, but yeah. it is. I think I, I think I realised that when I went when I went to my first gig back and it was just seeing seeing a crowd and a band and people singing and dancing and you, you kind of realise how much you've missed it. Yeah, no, I miss playing, that's for sure. You know what I mean? It's because uh, you know when you write songs as well, I think when you play live, every time you play a song to an audience, it's different and it's a different moment and the song lives in a different way at that moment. So it, it's it's new continually, even if it's old. That, that experience is new. So, I, you know, I really miss that. I mean, just um, talking about, I mean, you mentioned, you talked about obviously the emotional side to your lyrics and uh, some of them are quite personal. And uh, does... And you've talked about how music's been really important to you throughout your life. Has having that outlet given you, uh, helped you di- channel those emotions? Has that been a, a help to you? Especially doing things like bereavement and death. And... Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, I think it's a help to everyone because the, in listening to music in a way, listening to music really helps with that stuff. I think when you're really sad, you find a song that you listen to somehow and relate to, yeah. and it, it makes you almost ecstatic with grief you know what I mean yeah, or yeah. you know it can have the opposite effect or you know I, I think for me sometimes it's been difficult I, I'm not that confident I right. think I've been unconfident in my writing sometimes and I tend to hide what I'm feeling in the lyrics it's not right. overt you know it's not as obvious as it should be I think and I think sometimes I think maybe this album just managed to make it more I've, I've covered it up less right okay okay um i mean on a kind of different note though i mean looking back over your career and the sold out tour in 2021 your music's brought a lot of joy to people's lives i mean first of all that must be an amazing feeling having people connect with your music i'm very blessed you know i'm very lucky that i get to do what i do and got to do what i did and it's like a series of fortunate accidents that kind of get you there in the end sort yes. of thing, I suppose you know just little moments that shape things you know yeah. strokes of luck or making a right choice here and there you know and it it feels like a constant battle to some degree you know so I don't think you I don't think I sit there and think wow you know I did that I think every bit's been a bit of a worry and could have been right. better I'm still trying to get it right and you know you know, it, it still feels like, you know, I don't know, just, um, you know, you, the things I love are intimidating and inspiring, okay. but also, well, intimidating and inspiring, you think, why bother? You're never going to achieve that. Yeah. And then you think, no, I'd like to get somewhere near, I should, my stuff, I want it, you know, so it's a constant kind of, it's a constant kind of battle, really. Do you know what I mean? It, you know, and you—it's always a bit of a fight, and you can never—you can never really tell till later. You know, it's very difficult to know what's going on at the time because you get caught up in music. Yeah, I mean, away um, from music, I mean, what 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 puts a smile on your face? Probably football. Yeah, you know, and people. You know, okay. really, them two interests really football, and I like. You know, I like being with people. I like being with people when we're here. I like going out with, you know, I like being around people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I really like to be on my own as well. Yeah. So I'm someone who, I, you know, I like to be able to have my own space. 
when I want it as well. Yeah, I know that feeling. I'm with you I'm on that completely. Bastard, really. <laughs> it sounds like we've got a lot in common. Um, I mean, on the subject of football, obviously three lines was reworked really for the for the women's Euros. Are you are you a follower of the women's football? Yeah, it wasn't reworked though. A few people have said that. Why? Why do you think it's reworked? Well, I, that's that's how I'd read the kind of message. I thought it had kind of been reworked. I think we did a gig and we changed a couple of words before the final. I think you know. Right. I think we just did it. Okay, well, we never we didn't release a version. Yeah, yeah. We haven't changed anything since 1998. Yeah, and the 98 one is has gone. I think it's the original from 96 that is the song. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, sorry, what was the question? Sorry. I was just wondering, in terms of women's football, are you, are you kind of a follower of that? Is that something you can? can well, everyone is now, aren't they? I can't yeah. claim that I've followed it from its roots, and you know, but, yeah. you know. But I loved, I loved the Euros. Just, I loved the players, really. You know, just the way they were when they won, and so different to Premier League players. It was Absolutely, like, yeah proper emotion and it was a it was a beautiful thing and I was very very proud when they all burst into the uh, press conference and sang three lions over yeah. the Irish thing I thought it was really love I loved it because it was my song but also just them so genuine and happy and yeah. lovely it was I think it was inspiring to everyone really yeah I photograph a lot of women's football and there's definitely there's definitely a real honesty to it and a real passion yeah I think that you don't I kind of I kind of I used to well I used to live down so I used to live in Reading and I used to follow Reading a lot that was kind of through my flatmate and when when they got promoted to the Premier League it kind of lost its it lost its passion for me it didn't it just didn't feel the same it's just but, a uh, different sort of thing isn't it and yet everyone aspires to that probably women's football aspires to be yeah, like absolutely tennis football is but it's it is it is a lovely moment for it right now yeah, oh, definitely. I'm looking forward to the it's starting the season again. But yeah, there was definitely more, more of an honesty to it and a, a bit of a rawness, I think. But yeah, there was definitely some moments where you're like, they're really feeling that. Yeah. Okay, I mean, just to finish off then, um, the album's coming out in a couple of weeks and you've got the tour coming up. <laughs> um, what are your hopes kind of go, or what are your plans or thoughts going forward? Maybe you mean after the tour? Yeah, I'm really looking good. forward to doing the tour. You know, I think that would be great. I, I think it's a good time of the year to tour October, November. It's funny times we're all living in, obviously, but um, hopefully, you know, the gigs will be will be great in spite of uh, you know all the stuff that's going on in the wider world and it, and you know, um, and then I I definitely like to make an album probably fairly quickly. <laughs> Right, but I'd like to change a few things around okay. before I do that, and be in a slightly different situation. Yeah, and I think this time, the way people make records now is a lot to do with the computer and stuff. And I, I think I probably, having done that just now, I'd like to try and really find a way of recording it in a room with a lot of people because I, right, okay. I think it's more fun. And something, something magical. It's easier to get something magical to happen in that yeah. situation. I think. You know? yeah. I mean, just just on that note, going back to something you said earlier about losing losing kind of interest in everything. Do you think part of? I mean, the music industry's changed a lot over the last, especially over the last couple of years. What's your kind of thoughts on it now? Because you grew up, when it, probably similar to me, when it was you went out and queued up in shops to buy vinyl and you poured over the covers and everything. I mean. What's your view on the industry now? I mean, are you a fan of it? Are you a fan of the way it's gone with the streaming and all that kind of stuff? It just kind of is how it is. I think music's always been a followed technology. Yeah. You know, you had big orchestras, then when they invented the amplifier, it became, well, you can, you know, three blokes can make a big noise now with an amplifier. Yeah. But then you got the orchestras, but, you know, then it's synthesized, you know, and recording techniques. You know, it, it goes very much hand in hand with technology. And it's something that, you know, it always finds a way. Yeah. And I think there's loads of fantastic music around now. Yeah. Uh, it is really different to the way it used to be. Uh, but I think, I th you know, I think it, it, it's just, um, you know, here comes the old, the new boss, same as the old boss. Yeah. Nothing basic. 
live music in a sweaty room though so you find a way to not pay musicians whoever they are <laughs> yep i totally agree with that okay um just to wrap up then it's been great talking to you and like i said i really enjoyed the album so i'm looking forward to catching you on tour i mean we talked about the sold out tour earlier 2021 um those fans have stuck with you throughout your career have you got any message for them just to finish off thank you you know and i hope you like the new album hopefully you will i think it's you know i think i'm I'm proud of it and I hope uh, I hope people take to it, you know.